Kiske and Olga Takarzuk won the blank prize for literature. No pal. Right. At the World Gymnastics Championships on Tuesday, gymnast Blank won her 21st medal. Simone Biles. Right. The San Jose man who had his duffel bag stolen believes that the thieves did not know it had Blank inside. Just a lot of over two library books. No. <laughs> Four giant pythons. Oh, nice. The victim of the theft was a reptile breeder who had just gotten done giving a presentation at a local library and a gang of thieves made off with his bag containing four giant pythons. Desperate, the man posted a video on YouTube pleading for the animal's safe return and was relieved when the snakes responded, We're doing great! In fact, we just had the best meal of our lives! <laughs> Chucky, did Mo do well enough to win? Oh yes, Mo got six right for 12 more points, total of 15, so Mo is this Congratulations, Mo! In just a minute, we're going to ask our panelists to predict, now that the celibacy requirement might be lifted on the priesthood, what will be the next new rule the Pope might make? But first, let me tell you that support for NPR comes from NPR stations and progressive insurance committed to protecting cars and drivers, whether on the open road or having driveway moments while listening to NPR. Learn more at progressive.com. Hotels and resorts offering a range of wellness options for guests, including their Eat Well menu, on-demand fitness gear lending program, and signature Heaven with Bet. Learn more at Weston.com, a member of Marriott Bonville. And Home Advisor committed to helping homeowners find the right pro for their home projects. Homeowners can get matched to local pros, read reviews, and check project cost guides at HomeAdvisor.com. Special thanks to Stock and Ledger Restaurant here in Chicago for feeding us. Wait, wait, don't tell me is a production of NPR and WBEZ Chicago in association with Urgent Haircut Productions, Doug Berman, a benevolent overlord. Philip Godica writes our limericks, our public address announcer is Paul Friedman. Our house manager is Gianna Capadona. Our intern is Dariba Khan, and our web guru is Beth Miller. BJ Lederman composed our theme. Our program is produced by Jennifer Mills, Miles Dornbos, and Lillian King. Our writing residents this week are Millie Tamaras and Hannah Walonsky. Technical direction is from Lorna White. Our business and ops manager is Colin Miller. Our production manager is Robert Newhouse. Our senior producer, that's Ian Chillog, and the executive producer, wait, wait, don't tell me, is Michael Danforth. Now, panel, what will be the Pope's next rule? Paula Poundstone. Uh, the wine for the sacrament can be served in a pod. Shannon O'Neill. Uh, he said that Ellen and Roy Moore can attend a WNBA game together. And Mo Rocca. The Pope will allow nuns to fly again. <laughs> and if any of that happens, panel, we'll ask you about it on Wait, Wait, Don't Tell. Thank you, Chayoki Ianson. Thanks also to Paul Bouncer, Mo Rocca, and Shannon O'Neill. Thanks to all of you for listening. I'm Peter Sagal. We'll see you next week. This is NPR. On the Media is next on 90.9 WHYY. Good morning, I'm Kenneth Burns. It's a minute before 11. Supporting WHYY, Penn Medicine, and Virtua. The Penn Medicine Virtua Cancer Program offers a full range of treatment options for cancer patients right here in South Jersey, including reconstructive programs for breast cancer, minimally invasive surgery and advanced radiation treatments for colon and lung cancer, and dedicated nurse navigation to guide patients through their complex cancer journey. More details are available at virtua.org slash pencancer. This is WHYY-FM Philadelphia, WNJN-FM Atlantic City, WNJZ-FM Cape May Courthouse, WNJM-FM Manahawkin, WNJB-FM Bridgeton, and WNJS-FM Berlin. From WNYC in New York, this is On the Media. And on this week's show, our radical, paradoxical free speech tradition. Whenever you write about free speech, obviously the free speech absolutists are going to come out of the woodwork, and there are a lot of absolutists on the internet. But I didn't expect it to be so unrelated to what I actually argued. <laughs> it's one thing to talk about all these nice and fluffy concepts of free speech and being able to say whatever you want, but in the day-to-day -day reality of the United States, that just doesn't exist for many people.